2020 is almost in the bag. Pretty soon we'll have it in our rear view mirror and all this bad craziness will be behind us. Meantime, since it is the end of the year, I was sitting here thinking about all the trips that I've been on, on my bicycle, hiking in the woods, canoe trips, um, camping, fishing. It's been a wonderful year for me. I'm ashamed to say I had such a wonderful time during this pandemic getting out and camping and just having good, clean fun, staying away from people, you know, social distancing and all that. So uh, I have a standard uh, bunch of kit that I always travel with that I take with me on my little outings. And I had, um, you know, some time to reflect over my favorite ultralight gear items. And uh, this year, I, I've nailed it down to three that have just amazed me to death. This one, this is the uh, Pocket Billows. <laughs> it's basically just a radio antenna, but you blow through it to, you know, get uh, oxygen to the flame where you need it. This thing is just like, I don't know, it's awesome. And it's small, it weighs very little, next to nothing. The other favorite thing I have on my list is this uh, little mini ultralight alcohol stove. It's stove and pot stand all in one, DIY all the way. Uh, I think they call this, not the Fancy Feast, maybe, I forget. This is not a design that I came up with on my own, although I have made some changes that I believe are my own. So there's that, and then there is just, in my opinion, the best ultralight, ultra cheap knife you can possibly have. Now I have, this is the Mora uh, Companion HD Heavy Duty, which all that means basically is the thickness of the knife is a little more than the standard. I think this is 3.2 millimeters, and the standard uh, issue Mora I think is two millimeters thick. <clears throat> so those are the three and uh, we'll go into uh, some depth on each of those because they are just magnificent. So let's start with the the little pocket bellows. Uh, it's uh, three and three quarter inches long. It weighs 19 grams and extends out to 19 inches. And this is just fantastic if you've got to get down there and you know fan the flames. When you're old like me, you don't want to bend down. Plus, you don't have to get your face too close to the fire. And this just delivers a very concentrated stream of air, oxygen, to your fire. And it packs up nice and small and fits inside my little fire kit along with my fire steel, my striker, a lighter, and some tinder. Very nice. Fabulous. I encourage anyone who doesn't have one to get one. They're cheap. You can cannibalize an old radio uh, if you happen to have one laying around. Uh, you know, go to the junk shop. You can find one for cheap. I think I paid uh, like five dollars or something like that. I can't. Rem I can't remember honestly what I paid for it. Um, what else did it come with? Oh, it came with my uh, my uh, ferrocerium rod and striker. Uh, how much did I pay for that? I don't know. But you can find them on Amazon. Go look. So item number two, fave item number two, is the little DIY alcohol stove. Uh, sits like that, that's a four ounce fuel bottle, Nalgene bottle. This little stove burns one ounce of fuel at a time, it's perfect. One ounce of fuel with my pot, <clears throat> I can boil uh, 500 mils in six minutes. That's it. An ambient temperature of zero Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, with a total burn time of 10 minutes uh, over and over and over again. This is... I have to talk about this because it's kind of unusual. Normally it's made with this size tin, which in this case it's a spicy Thai uh, chili uh, tuna. Uh, how many grams is this? It's an 85 gram can, but this, if you use a, a pot stand, sits too high to, uh, with my pot and my windscreen to be really effective, so that's why I've cut it down. 
The bare bones version looks something like this, and it is so simple, I'll take it apart. The stand is a, a tomato paste can that I've cut down. You've probably seen these. The wick material is just carbon felt, and then the pan or the bottom of my stove, again, is one of these cans that's been sliced in half. Now, the problem with this, and it's not a major problem really, I guess, but because of this construction, oftentimes what happens is it'll fall apart on me. You know, it's hard to put back together if I'm cold or hungry or cranky or whatever. So what I did was, I took two of these, cut them in half, so I used the top half of one, crimped the edge, and then pounded it down inside the bottom half of the other. And what that does is the lip, I don't know if you can see this lip here, sits down on top of the felt and holds it in place so the felt can't come out. But also I cut the felt a little thicker, wider, than this dimension here. So it almost acts like a compression fitting and squeezes this stand in place. So it's about eight grams heavier than the old version, but it doesn't come apart on me. My fuel bottle sits inside there. That goes inside of my Lixada wood gas stove, and that all fits inside of my pot. So that has been a really handy item. You know when you're bicycling, you're you're pedaling down the trail and you kind of bonk, you've got to feed yourself fast. And it's so much nicer to have that little alcohol stove to whip something up real quick or to make a cup of coffee real fast and not have to go gather twigs and sticks and things for the, the twig burner stove. So that definitely is fave item number two for 2020. I think that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. So, actually I should add, obviously, if you do the math, a four ounce bottle gives you four burns. <laughs> and uh, if anybody saw my, uh, my uh, bike packing trip uh, to Mont Laurier this summer, carrying extra fuel bottles can be a problem. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. One more thing on, on these, uh, on these uh, alcohol stoves. I forgot to mention the weight. This one weighs 24 grams and I still carry this one you know I, I, you know despite the fact that sometimes it falls apart if you squeeze that felt down in there nicely it, it'll stay together it's not a big deal this one as I said you get an 8 gram penalty because you're basically squeezing two pieces together um, but rock solid rock solid I've never broken one of these and actually this one because it has the rim is even stronger and more durable than this one. I suspect too that this one has a little more thermal mass maybe which might or might not <laughs> make it work better or burn hotter or who knows what anyway. Okay red hot item number three the Mora HD companion knife. Um, what does this weigh? I'll find out for you here in a sec. But I got the, uh, you know, the safety orange because several years ago I was hiking with a, um, a Becker BK2, which is a massive heavy, it weighs a pound, it's a massive knife, and I dropped it in the woods and I never heard it fall, only to discover later that I had indeed dropped it and lost it, and that was a painful experience. I spent hours trying to find that knife, and because it was black, it was very hard to find. I did find it eventually, but it was an unpleasant experience. So as well as being expensive, it was black and uh, not easy to find. If I lay this down anywhere, I, can, I will never have a problem trying to find it. Okay, so that's uh, enough said about the Blaze Orange. Plastic sheath. I love this belt loop thingy because I don't wear it on a belt. I just stick it in my pocket and hook this on the inside of my pocket. Never falls out. Super light. It's got a little drain hole in the bottom so if water gets in it, it drains really easy. I got these little ranger bands on here that I can string my uh, lighter to or my pocket bellows. Um, 
It is not a full tang knife, but I really don't require a full tang knife as uh, experience has shown. It's a, uh, what do they call it, Sandvik uh, high carbon steel blade, which means it will rust if you don't keep it oiled. But, you know, I'm always slicing through sausage and stuff and cheese with this, so it gets plenty of oil on it, which also means it has a nice little patina on it. And after four years, this booger is razor freaking sharp. Hair popping sharp, as they say. You just, you know, strop it on the leather, you're good to go. Fabulous grip. I can't say enough about the grip of this. It's nicely uh, molded and shaped and this rubber handle, you know, if your uh, hands are gloved in gore from some mammal that you are in the process of slaughtering, this still will not slip out of your grip. Likewise, you know, it's a little thick for, uh, you know, filleting a fish, but it's doable. And for any cooking, camp kitchen need, it's fantastic. Scandy grind, full Scandy grind is just superb for uh, wood prep, for fire making. And the weight, oh, it's so light. I'll go weigh this real quick, we'll find out. Okay, 133 grams. Might be a little less if I took these uh, bands off, but wow, man. I can't say enough good things. There's no reason not to have one of these. Uh, where did I get this? Uh, through Amazon, I believe, .ca. Uh, I think it was, I wanna say $28 Canadian. But uh, for all y'all Americans, you can find these for considerably less. Also, it's worth noting that the standard, not the HD version of this, I just ordered, uh, off of Amazon.com for my brother, and I think it was 18 bucks US. Same knife, just with a slightly thinner, slightly thinner blade. Also, I believe I got the uh, stainless steel version for him, just because it's probably easier for him to take care of versus a, a carbon steel blade like this. You know, like I said. If you leave it, it, it couldn't rust. And frankly, I don't know that he'll get that much use out of it. But my nephew, who got this one, I think he could get a lot of use out of it. So Dylan, hey, man, keep it oiled, right? So that's it. Three uh, just red hot items for 2020 uh, that will see a lot of use in 2021. God willing. <laughs>